Hi, I'm Joe and welcome to the channel. In this Inspired By series, I like to take an original piece of music either inspired by an artist or a genre and break it down for you. I show you each individual guitar part so you can learn those techniques that make up that music and incorporate them into your own playing. And as always, in the description below, you can download the track for free to practice. In this video, we're going to look at indie rock. Hey, if you're new to the channel here and you find any value in this video whatsoever, please do me a favor and consider supporting the channel for free by subscribing down below and hitting the like button. Let's go ahead now and jump into the track. Before I break down the guitar parts, I just wanted to share some quick observations about indie music in general. What I love about this genre is, is that it just blurs the lines. It just mixes and matches all different genres, even sometimes in the same song. And I think that's a great takeaway for us. What's nice about it is that we can use those other influences that we have from the music that we listen to and put it into our own music. And what's really nice about what they do with this is they do it to exploit the lyrical content or to support the lyrical content would be a better way to say it. Sometimes they'll start out with something moody in the beginning and it matches the words of the song. And then it jumps into like a completely different section. Maybe it's expressing a different type of emotion. And that's what I try to do with this song. I start out with some sort of like minor feel to make it kind of sad. And the next thing you know, we're into a funk feel. Another great thing about this genre is is that they're using two to three chord, you know, vamp chord progressions and kind of getting the listener into a mood. And that's one way to set the mood is kind of come up with a chord progression that kind of just is repeating, but not in a boring way, in a way that kind of starts to um, bring the listener into the music. So for this song, all I'm basically doing is using two chords, a C minor seven, to an E flat major seven. Now what's interesting about that too is that indie music doesn't mind borrowing even from jazz. There we're kind of using some more minor seven, major seven flavors for our chords. So let's go ahead and jump into the first guitar part and I'll show you one sort of chord voicing for those chords. So the first guitar part basically is playing just a nice little C minor 7 going to the E flat major 7. But we're going to go down a little bit lower on the guitar neck. So instead of the shape that I showed you in the beginning, we're going to play it down here. And basically what I'm doing is I'm omitting the fifth. And that's something that you can do in your chords. The main feeling and vibe of a chord really comes from the third, and if it is a seventh chord, the seventh. So in this case here, I'm actually playing just the root, the C, the third, E flat, and the minor seven, which is the B flat. And that kind of gives you that vibe. And then I'm going to basically keep my fingers in the same position, and I can pick up the E flat here, the open string for the G, for the third of the E flat major seven, and I'm gonna add the major seven, the D, on top. So the two chords go like this. Now that's a lot of finger gymnastics. So what I did for this guitar part is I just barred the whole thing, kept this all down. I shouldn't say barred, I just used this whole shape, pressed down on the fretboard. And then when it came to the E major 7, I just lifted up my third finger, which was playing the B flat, to open and expose that open string. Now the picking pattern that I chose actually was very challenging and actually took me a week. And I had to practice this slowly. 
You're gonna go down. And then just skip over a string and play the C and the B flat. So you kind of arpeggiating the chord. And I would just encourage you just to practice that really slow, and that's what I had to do. And the picking pattern I'm doing is down, down, up, down, down, up. So down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up. And the reason why I chose the up string, up stroke, on that last note is we kind of set your hand up for success to go into the next string. And for the E major 7, I'm going to do the same thing. Down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. And you can come back to the C minor 7. And like I said, just practice that kind of slowly. And that's all it is for part 1. Guitar part 2 kind of acts a little bit like a keyboard or a pad sound. It's just a texture. And that's what's nice about this music too. If you kind of listen to it, on the surface you kind of hear maybe a primary instrument. In this case it was the guitar. But behind the scenes there's other things happening that are supporting that. Just as again textures to the music. So all I'm doing for this part is I put on a kind of a special kind of modulated delay. I mean <laughs> reverb. And I'm trying to treat this again like a pad sound, like a, almost like a keyboard part. And all I'm doing is I'm playing the root, which is the C, for the C chord, and then I'm playing the B flat for the E major 7 chord. And it kind of just, I kind of made it feel like a little bit like swelly. So again, a very simple part, but one that just adds a little bit of texture behind the main parts. Guitar part three is just kind of a little bit of a light lead line that's happening before we transition to the next part of the song. One thing I noticed about indie music that there's not a lot of guitar solos in it, but there are kind of these melodic moments that happen. And I'm trying to set up a little bit of a motif that you'll hear later on in the second part, which is kind of this trilly sound. And all I'm doing is I'm playing inside of the C minor pentatonic. Um, mainly borrowing from shape one and shape two. And I'm starting here and I'm gonna hammer on to the G, which would be the fifth of the C minor. And I'm ending up on the B flat for the E major seven chord. So again, just a very simple line, staying inside of the C minor pentatonic box, and it just adds a little bit of a melodic moment inside of the song. Guitar part four kind of enters in when we start the whole funk transition. And all I'm doing is playing those C minor seven and E major seven shapes, and just kind of doing more of, like I said, like a, a funk feel in the beginning. And just kind of adds a little bit of energy to the bass line. And if you notice what I was trying to do, I originally had the part that was more busy. But I ended up not using that. Why? Well, I felt like the bass line was getting covered up. And it was just making things just too busy for the listener to... to to even pick up on all the different guitar parts. And that's a great lesson here. <laughs> Sometimes less is more, and you gotta leave space for the other instruments. So again, I just ended up with kind of some stabs. Again, sometimes keeping a little bit of space makes the parts that much more effective. So guitar part five, this is where the fun begins. <laughs> No good indie song would happen without a little bit of fuzz. I noticed that on a lot of the songs that there's a nice little fuzz pedal happening, which is fantastic. I love fuzz pedals. 
What's nice about it is it kind of adds a little bit of a great sustain to your lines that you're playing to kind of give it a more of a vocal quality. And all I'm doing here is I'm just staying again in our good old friend, the C minor pentatonic scale, and just playing basically a C to the E flat, bending up to the G, and then coming back down and sliding it into the G. And then landing on the major seven, the D of the E major seven chord. So basically, the first thing that I'm doing is I'm really targeting just an arpeggio, a C minor arpeggio, and then emphasizing with a half step move the major seven of the E flat major seven chord. And that's what's kind of nice, a nice little takeaway, maybe a little for this part is think of ways to connect the different chord changes by making the minimalist move possible inside of your lead lines. And I also am experimenting a little bit with a technique I've been trying to do where I bend up a note and then slide into that same pitch. That sustain from that fuzz is great and you can wiggle it. And then I follow the bass line, ending on the root, the C, to finish the song out. Guitar part six basically is the same thing as guitar part five, but it's harmonized. It's down here, and I'm playing off with the G. the song. So those two parts together kind of give you this nice little harmonized, harmonized <laughs> melody line happening before the song ends. So indie music is just a great and fun genre. And remember, in the description below, you can download this track for free and practice along to it. There's two tracks, actually. One is the full band, and the other one is just the bass and drums. This way you can come up with your own guitar parts. There's a lot of great things to take away from indie music. I think the main one really is don't be afraid to experiment and inject different flavors of music that influences you into your own songs. Well, that's another video down for the Inspired By series. Again, if you found any value in it whatsoever, please consider supporting the channel by subscribing down below, hitting the like button, and knock on the bell and you'll be notified when the next video comes out. As always, I wish you a wonderful day.